Paint Along Tuesdays is a public group on Facebook at, and Lynn Looney Studios is where you can see these tutorials every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Be sure if you like to subscribe and hit that notification bell and watch to the very end for additional information on supplies and the schedule for 2021. Hey Paint Alongs, I cannot go live for this particular uh, session so here I am on YouTube and for those of you who are new here, uh, welcome, I'm Lynn Looney and this particular piece is on YouTube, a lot of others will be following shortly uh, and this is our Paint Along Tuesday design for April the 20th, uh, acrylic painting and uh, it's mostly um, like a palette knife and or one of the things that I use and we have used in previous sessions is like a courtesy card or credit card uh, in lieu of if you don't have a palette knife uh, you don't have to run out and get any kind of special equipment this will work satisfactorily and I'm going to be doing most of this with that and a brush okay um, so, um, to let you know, I'm going to be approaching this one very similar to how I do a number of others, and that's in layers, and I put a tone on the canvas. Now, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this is a black line, which is, um, this one is actually an 8x10, it, but it's proportionate to the 11x14. This is an 11x14, the standard size, if you were to draw a line here. Okay, uh, so this helps folks who don't really know um, or feel comfortable in their with their drawing abilities. And this is one of the ways that they can transfer a design by using one quart, uh, quarter, uh, laying that in, and the next one, the next one. And by the time you put them all together, you have transferred a uh, design, okay? Uh, this particular one, I'm going to do a uh, light stain on the canvas first, just to get rid of the white of the canvas, all right? And for that, I'm using just an old junk brush, and I have some, let's see, we're going to work with burnt sienna, a little water. A little burnt sienna. And I think I'm going to dig up some ochre. Uh, the palette for this particular piece, <coughs> if you want to follow this color scheme, is burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cad yellow, phthalo green. Phthalo green is one of my favorite greens to use because depending on how you lay it out, um, either with white, it'll turn very cool and be almost teal, or you can put yellow with it and have a really bright, limey green. It's very versatile, so you can get a lot in it. Um, there is a public group on Facebook called Paint Along Tuesdays. Isn't that handy? And uh, one of the top announcements is, is a yellow block, and it has a listing of the very rudimentary uh, supplies necessary. I'm a big one for, um, you know, doing it minimally. Uh, check out acrylics. See if you like it before you go out and invest a huge amount of monies into a bunch of materials and supplies that you're very likely maybe not ever going to use again okay so i put some pigment on here and now i'm taking it off mostly um i just got a paper towel and i'm doing that so it'll dry quickly uh, and all of this basically is going to get covered up so it's no big deal uh, but that way, as we're painting, and if you don't paint completely well, then you don't have those little white specks. I'm going to kind of get rid of those 
uh, streaks that the paper towel made. All right. Okay. So now it's going to go down in front of the fan and it'll dry for a few minutes to set up before we do our next step. Okay, uh, a few minutes on the dryer and uh, we're back. Okay, here is our piece and I'm gonna transfer the design and I like to use a watercolor pencil and or a brush, it doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, I, yeah, it's gonna be hard to see that. I'll go ahead and use a brush and a little bit of color. I've got some ochre and some purple here and since it's almost always going to get covered up, I can literally divide it in half, uh, vertically and horizontally. Okay, so now I'm going to take this quadrant right down here and I'm going to indicate some table. Here's the bottom of the base. Here's a handle. There's a flower, there's a flower. And what I'm gonna do is put the center in the flowers. That gives me a really good little roadmap on where they are. There's that one, this one, and then this one. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'm not going to bother, let's see, one, two, three, a little bitty one down here. Touch up one right there, touch up one right there. Uh, and then that is this cross, this hatching, it's actually not cross hatching. Goes only went, went one direction, but uh, the the hatching is so you can see the difference uh, because this painting has hang on, a lot of greenery, uh, but there's snippets of the background and a little bit of blue uh, that I I mean you know it could be blue flowers it could be I just wanted to put a little more uh, an additional color up there. Uh, so it wasn't solid green, and I just really like the play of the blue and the yellow together. I had somebody ask me what this flower was, <laughs> and I don't think I know. Um, it's just a little, it's just a little uh, blossom. Uh, this is very loose, very impressionistic. So um, if you have a particular name for that flower, you're most welcome to dub it your favorite yellow flower. Uh, but uh, for the composition's sake, I broke it up to remind you not to make it solid, solid green. Okay, and to see kind of the direction uh, and areas that all of this greenery takes. And uh, then I'm going to switch to my makeshift palette knife. All right. <clears throat> and let me get this back up here. Okay. That is pretty much maybe a little indication right here. Oh, and let's do some table. Got a little bit of table here. And here, very, very loose. Okay, uh, what we can do with a big, broad brush is lay in some dark. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm looking at this and I'm pulling out the flowers 
and I'm pretending that there's dark areas around those flowers and I'm just going to lay in some dark. All right. Here and here around this way and here and there and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that down so that it can dry again because that's one of the key things on how I do these and how you can be successful in acrylics is not trying to do too much because when it starts blending, if you're not familiar with it, you're just going to wind up with a bunch of mud. So the best thing to do is to let it dry and then layer, layer, layer these colors on top of each other. Okay, so again, to the fan. Okay, so I laid in a little bit of dark around where the flowers are gonna be. Make sure I'm centered here so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, next I'm gonna take my little courtesy card or my credit card and lay in a little bit more. Uh, the nice thing about these is they're lightweight enough. You can take an ordinary pair of scissors and cut them and then you can create a shape that would work for you. I'm, I can get into little bitty spaces, medium, broad, okay? So I'm taking a little burnt sienna and actually I got a little alizarin crimson, a little purple. And from looking at this, again, I'm gonna lay in A little bit more dark around these flower areas okay and I'm just using I mean if you have palette knives you're welcome to use those but like I said I wanted to show that this could be done by just utilizing something as simple I mean most of the time we throw these things away I've got a jar <laughs> and uh, I keep whenever I've uh, got expired uh, you know or any time these are you know, past their use usefulness and then they go into the jar and then uh, again one of these days when I've got live classes uh, I pass them out to my students to give it a try okay all right there's some darker and then I'm going to dip into my burnt uh, sienna and ochre together and step it up a little bit. And in some of these other areas, I try and blend it on the palette so it's not so streaky here. But I'm adding a little more pigment. Here we go. Now, hopefully you understand that these sessions, I mean, I do spend the, the about 90 minutes telling you how to reproduce this particular piece, but uh, understand you can just use it like a springboard uh, to try your hand, but you're most welcome to make this design your own. I mean, you can change the color palette. Uh, you can uh, modify some of some of the folks who come to the paint alongs paint in a much more traditional manner. They don't get quite as wild and crazy as I do here. Uh, then there are other people who are used to painting. Uh, in a fairly traditional manner and they're looking to kind of push the envelope and uh, do something a little newer. Here is just ochre and white laying in a little bit of lighter because I'm going to set this down in front of the fan again.
some lighter areas. And this is mostly ochre and yellow. A little bit here. And as long as it's not touching, then another thing that we can lay in at this time before it goes down in front of the fan to dry is uh, our yellows, okay? And I'm going to a smaller, slightly smaller format. And I have cadmium yellow and just a little bit of white. And I'm laying that around our centers. Maybe I'm going to go to a smaller area yet. Oh, that one's giving me a line. I may not have cleaned my edge very well. If that happens, see I keep getting this scratchy line. Um, when I'm using these, I uh, throw them in the water uh, to keep them soft so the paint doesn't dry because that's probably what that has happened. The paint has dried there. And uh, I'll scrape it off and then I'll use a emery board or a little piece of sandpaper to sand the edge smooth if it turned out to be a little bit rough. So I can still keep using it. Or if you have a plethora of these, if you, if you have a glut of courtesy cards just throw it away and get you another one either way all right and we're laying in our little flowers layers oh there's a flower right here did I miss that? I must have missed it. Okay. This is nothing says I can't do it now. All right, there you go. Uh, in my other sessions, while the stuff is drying, I usually do some kind of a little commercial um, about like my Tuesday evenings. Every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., I do an abstract session it is not quite structured like this. It's not a, uh, we're gonna do an abstract painting from start to finish. I'm literally working in the studio on my paintings and I invite you in to watch and I talk and I tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and why. I might be working on paper. I might be doing small formats. I might be doing large formats. Uh, never know from week to week um, lately. I worked a 40 by 50 canvas and uh, Tuesday evening, I'm going to try and finish it up. Those sessions are actually originate from another pro page called Lindy's Audacious Art Shows um, normally, or they can be found here at Lynn Lindy Studios. So I'm going to switch and I notice I've got a little bit of cadmium down here it's another scratchy one I need to check my edge there we go I picked up a little bit of paint flake all right so very very rough early stages yet oh there's a little bitty flower right here. Okay. And off to the dryer once again. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so you can see it's beginning to build up. All right, we've got the overall composition blocked in there. And uh, this is something I encourage no matter what you're doing, whether it's a landscape or a person or a floral still life or whatever, <coughs> bring your painting up all at one time. Don't stop and do a detailed, you know, don't concentrate on a flower or an area of greenery or something like that. What we're doing is bringing up the whole painting together. Uh, it'll work faster. By the time you bring it all up, and this is also good that you can go through as you're going and anywhere that you might need to uh, modify your drawing. Uh, in fact, like here, for me, um, I'm looking at uh, this sweep of flowers right here, and I think I've got one too many. This little guy needs to come back out, okay? Uh, and this is a good time to do any kind of uh, correction or modification. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do, too, is to lay in... I'm going to lay in one more layer of yellow here. And uh, then I'm going to lay in some of that dark green. Here's one I forgot. Look, bless his little heart. I don't know if you guys can hear the neighbors are having some tractor work done. It's a little noisy outside. Okay. And this guy's going to go away. I'm going to put a little bit more here. here and let me move this guy over a little bit and this early stage it's no big deal when you get a painting almost finished and you look at it and you say oh man I need to do a major adjustment on my composition it's much harder when things are much further along. Okay. A little bit of light. I'm layering. Uh, and next, I'm going to mix up we're taking our thalo green. Which in itself is very cool. If we were to put white with this, it would be an almost teal. Uh, I'm going to put a little purple with it. And then a little bit of this ochre. So I can at least see. Otherwise, it'll look almost black. Okay, now I'm laying in dark green. Okay. And I'm moving this flower over a hair. Cut this one down a little bit. I think I need to make that little guy a little bit bigger. So I'm evaluating my composition as I go. This is a dark green. It's made up with phthalo and purple and yellow ochre are the three main colors here. It's very dark. Very rich. Really is pretty up against that sienna. But just like the centers, 
you want to have your darks down and you want to have them nice and solid because then when you go to put your centers in, uh, they'll have that nice dark to contrast against. Just lay a little bit of it down here, spread it around a hair. It's going to dry. It's going to get covered up. Okay. And you notice I take the painting over the edge. One last pass around here. See where else I might need that. Okay, so I'm just lifting all those lighter colors, looking at what needs to be underneath it. Now uh, I'm going to switch off to some dark blue. Here's the handle of the vase. And I'm going to lay in some dark under these leaves and on the bottom of the vase hit a little bit over here a little bit over here and again I'm not trying to finalize anything too soon I'll take this now And I'm going to take that cerulean blue in my small end, and I'm just going to lay a little bit of blue in here amid my greenery. Just dotting it around a little bit. Okay. Uh, the one thing about doing these, this video instead of my live presentation is I don't have the interaction with you guys. I've got some regulars that tune in every week, uh, whether they're painting or not. Sometimes they don't paint. They just come in to, <laughs> to give it, give it to, and uh, say, hey. Uh, but it's we've become uh, Facebook buddies, pen pals over the last year. And... Uh, so it's really pleasant to have that interaction. Uh, and if you would like to participate, all you got to do is go to Facebook to Paint Along Tuesdays group. It's a public group and just ask to join and hit the notification. And then whenever I'm putting up all the new designs and the blank lines for the each week, you'll get a notification and you can see what we're going to be doing. I'm trying to do a theme for the month. Uh, this is a continuation of April's theme, which is flowers. Then in May, it's going to be uh, patriotic because of Memorial Day coming up. And then uh, July, uh, for the 4th of July, for here us here in the States. Uh, but because in July, we do Christmas in July. That's what we did last year. A lot of people really enjoyed that, and that was a lot of fun. We did Santas and snowmen and poinsettias and cardinals in the snow. So uh, we'll offer up another listing of uh, Christmas in July. So some months are a little more uh, staid and serious. Some months are a little more whimsical. Uh, understand I've got folks coming from all different um skill levels to come in here and paint and I try to offer a little bit of everything uh, so you know folks who are not really into landscapes may lay out for that month and then come in uh, my ladies my whimsical ladies were very popular we did that uh, for March and we're gonna do that again in August but for a listing of those various monthly subjects, that's posted at Paint Along Tuesdays as well on Facebook. All you gotta do is just go and scroll. All right, back to the dryer. 
All right, back from the dryer. And now we are ready to lay in our medium and our light greens, light blues. Uh, put a little bit more here on the table and uh, maybe to a lighter application in the background, but we're getting there. I mean, I hope you're seeing how it's developing. All right, so we've got a medium green And I'm just beginning to dot that in a little bit in the background. I'm keeping a close eye on our original. I'm trying to come as close to this as possible uh, like I said, to show you how I accomplished it, how it was done. Uh, you by no means have to be that uh, critical in yours. Medium greens. And we need those dark and medium greens down there so we come in and put our light green. It'll really have something to contrast against and to pop really look nice. And we really cannot see the top of that pitcher, that vase. And just like I do in my bouquets, uh, I like to I like to add grasses and foliage. Sometimes I'll have some shrubbery and I'll even clip those, I'll clip those leaves and put in for a contrast of size and color. I love spiky things that extend out of the arrangements. All right, now for the light green. And I really don't want these to blend. You know, maybe what I need to do is let that set up a minute and then I'll come back and do it. There are other areas I can be working on. And one of those is the table. And here I've got a little bit of sienna and ochre and white. I'm blending that. And see, if this area is too ochre, then I can drag across, or too blue, I can always drag across with a little bit of color. If I get too much on there, don't panic, you know? You just let it dry and then uh, drag a little color, a little pigment over it later. Those layers, it'll get richer and uh, more lovely as you do that. Get a nice layering, a nice layering of colors. I'm gonna have the, there is a, a light source kind of coming across this way. So these flowers are lighter than these. This side of the table is darker than this. I mean, lighter than this side, this side's darker. Um, so I do have a play of light happening here. So I'm gonna darken this just a hair. And again, if I get it too dark, I can just let it dry and I can go back over it again in a little bit. But see how those layers are building, how nice that looks. And see, I can come across this because that blue is dry now. If I had done that while it was still wet, it would pick up and try and blend and it would get really um, muddy and kind of yucky. So I much prefer to layer. And that's why I don't try and detail too soon because there's just these layers. It can change things so much. And there's no point in locking yourself in 
or overworking an area that's just going to get covered up later. Okay, so let me take my little piece here. And I am doing a light blue. A lot more white in the blue. And I figure if I got my dark too dark, that's okay. Just a little bit to make it sparkle. And I'm coming out on top of some of my darker blues. There we go. Coming along. Now to my light greens. And let's let that other dark green set up a little bit so it's going to be much less likely to blend. I want this to be sitting on top of that other color. And these are just little droplets of color. And we just keep building it. Building it. There are going to be more over here on this side because of the light source. And I'm really pushing it because I want to be able to get this done within the 90 minutes or less that I allocate each week. You don't have to push yourself that hard, okay? You can relax after this segment if you are trying to paint along. If you feel like you're getting a little overwhelmed, uh, just sit back and relax. Continue to watch, and then after it's all done, you can just rewind and take it a step at a time. Pause where you need to. That's the nice thing about having it on archive video. And pretty soon I'll make all of the sessions that I've done over the last year. I'll be putting those up, all of those from last year. Uh, so if you are just now coming in and hearing about us, or if you uh, didn't feel ready to try them at that time, um, then you'll be able to check those out under this video in the description there will be links that you can click and information uh, and uh, to help you become a little more familiar with with me and the various things that I've done in the works uh, I am always I've worked in uh, for years when I was younger and 50 pounds lighter, <laughs> I used to do murals and faux finishing, mostly in the Atlanta area, but I worked down around Columbus, Georgia and South Texas. I did a number of things in Gonzales, Texas and Victoria, Texas, murals and such. A number of those photo albums can be seen at Lynn Looney Studios on Facebook in the photo albums. <coughs> And then uh, when I can clone myself and have the time, I'll also probably put those up on a website so that you can see the various things. I just been, I've been pushing paint around people all my life in one way or another. Not always in a studio, not always on canvas. Uh, I utilize my talent and abilities to do lots of different things including painting signage, billboards, backdrops, um, theater 
I did theater design and production of scenery and things. Lots of different uh, stuff. Worked in the entertainment industry, um, party decorating industry, theme parties, creating sets and backdrops for that as well. And just in these last, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 years, really, I've not been in the studio as much. So I've had a lot of experience doing lots of different things with acrylics and water-based paints. All right. Okay, so now I've laid in some more of the green. And now I'm going to come back and mix... Uh, that background color and that consists of sienna and ochre white got a lot of ochre a little bit of alizarin crimson I put alizarin crimson out to redden the burnt sienna a little bit But when I mix all that up, if I get too much alizarin crimson, it gets too pink. I'm not really a pink person. So I'm going to come in here with a little bit of sienna. A little more. I think I used up all I had out. And again, using my smaller piece. Come in here and add a little more pigment. Make these areas a little bit richer. And this makes a little more sense whenever you look at that black line and those little dollops of those little spacers I did. I took this little guy out, so I'm going to come on top of him with some color and again if you get too heavy handed with this color let it dry you can come back and just dab on top of it again but we layer we continue to layer for a lighter a lighter color still this is on the side where we're getting a little more sunshine our light source is a little stronger did you notice whenever I come in here with the lighter I still leave some of that darker I don't try and cover it up 100%. And I'm not sure whether this will get a frame on it or not. So in case it doesn't, I'm bringing the painting over the edge. Right. 
here. to a little bit more light yellow or white very light right here a little more yellow in there and just a little bit over that Highlight. I don't do too much. I don't do too much. I need to let that dry. That was a lot that I put down, but instead of trying to correct that, I'm just going to let it dry. I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll come back and touch up on top of it. All right. And the same thing like with my greens. Now I'm coming in with a very, very light green. Very pale. So I probably got about four or five different green. Whoops, I hit some of that background color, so it may be time to go back to the dryer. That's how it works, guys. All right, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Back to the fan. Okay, one of the things about um, getting away from your piece for a little bit, just like I'm doing as I'm drying, is um, there are several ways that I suggest that you do that, other than put it in front of a fan. Uh, when you're working on your piece, you can use your iPhone uh, to take a picture of it and then edit in the editing part uh, you can modify uh, to a black and a white photograph of your painting. And then you can really see your contrast and your lights and your darks. Now, as I was um, scrutinizing this, um, I want to modify the shape of my flowers a little bit more here. And... Um, I'm about ready to move to a brush. Just because you start with your courtesy card doesn't mean you have to end with your courtesy card. And I'm going to put a little bit of... Um, and, and sometimes I like to use a small brush because I'm not going to really be painting in the traditional way. I'm loading my little brush up with a lot of paint, for instance, on my yellows. Um, what I'm looking at here is the vase here is lower and a little bit wider. I've got this big gap right here. This flower wound up going a little high and so I'm going to bring it down a little bit here. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm laying in that flower. While I have that yellow on my brush, I'm going to expand the size of this flower. Make it a little bit bigger. And then this guy right here is the biggest one of all. And as I look at my original, I've also got this kind of, it's like a petal extending out. I like that. So I'm coming in here and laying that in. I've got a very white yellow that I'm using here where the 
sun or our light source is coming in. The same thing here. There's a lot of light. A lot of light. So I'm solidifying my flowers. And even though the paint is thick, it may be wet underneath, but the top is, is um, literally like scabbed over. So I'm not getting any blended color. Okay. And this little guy down here, and I'm going to lower him a little bit. And this little guy. here make the center a little smaller on that one by just adding more yellow now I've got a darker yellow that I'm seeing on some of these pieces and what I'm going to do is take the yellow ochre and the cadmium yellow together and create a darker yellow. If I can get it open. So here's cad yellow and ochre. And then I'm gonna lay that on the back side. And now this, see, is dry. So I can come back. Actually, I can thin that. And I can just tint that. All right, now. So I'm feeling better about our flowers. Well, if you really want to see this piece pop, then you take, wait a minute. I have a little brush I really like for this. And I just come in here and I start to dot. You can use a toothpick. You can use the back end of the brush. Lay those centers in. And the same thing, if you do this and you get, get them too solid or too big, you just let them dry. And then go back in with the dark and break them up. That's how we get those centers to pop. But that doesn't happen unless you've got that dark down first. You've got to have a really dark dark down first.
here. here. There you go. Maybe at this time I'd be reading the comments from all the folks. Like I said, I really miss that part of it. And now with a lighter color and see all of this, all of the colors that I've got down here are dry. There's no wet paint except for those centers and the yellow that I just did. So I can take a very, very light green and just rake across the tops of these green clusters. Like so. I can come in here with some darker green. Oh, it's all dried up. Got the fan going half the time, so. Bring that down a little bit. And just as I can do that with the green, I can also do it with our dark. So I'm taking our Thalo green and our dioxide purple. And I guess I got a little bit of a lizard and crimson left. And here I'm coming with my brush up close to my flowers, dropping a little bit of dark on the back side with my brush. No solid line, just a choppy little stroke. And this is also the time whenever if you've got uh, a little bit too much of the blue or too much of the background, uh, this is a good time to be knocking that down. Let me move this little guy down a little bit. Put a little bit more dark around that guy. See how it made him pop? And this one, I think I moved down just a hair. And even around the handle.
Okay. Oh, we've got a lot of light green right there. We'll come back in here. And then you can ditz and ditz and ditz to your heart's content. And I may do that toward the end of this. This piece uh, actually moved a little faster in the YouTube section since I wasn't interacting with my buds. So uh, I'm not sure that it's going to run a full 90 minutes, but that's okay. Because anything that you need to check out or to review, all you got to do is back it up. Uh, if you have any questions or you've got some comments, you can leave those down in the comment section or you can uh, direct message me at Paint Along Tuesdays. I hope you'll consider joining and uh, becoming a regular. Every Tuesday on Facebook at Lynn Looney Studios 10 a.m. Central Standard Time I paint live and we do a new design every week and then that evening I do abstracts and I do that over at Looney's Audacious Art Shows so Tuesdays is a painting day for me and I hope it will become a painting day for you as well all right, so guys, thank you so much. Oh, one more thing, a reminder, when you get ready to sign your piece, you wanna come up at least a finger's width from the bottom and from the side, because if you put this into a frame, that frame, a quarter inch of that frame is gonna eat up your painting. So you don't ever wanna sign right on the very edge, because if you do frame it, it's gonna chop it off and you're just gonna have the tips of your, of your lettering. It's gonna look a little, unusual all right so i hope this is helpful i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you again soon bye bye